We are back on Inside Politics. Our guest today is columnist and uh, journalist uh, Keel Hunt. Uh, Keel, uh, right now it appears after the election, after the conventions are over, that, uh, that Joe Biden continues to have a, a pretty, pretty decent lead, five or six points, maybe a little bit higher. It's getting closer in some of the battleground states. Uh, but when you look at the betting odds on 538, uh, they're even Stephen. Do the smart boys and smart girls know more about this than perhaps the pollsters do? No, no, they don't. No, they don't. And I think what, what counts, of course, is how people cast their votes, and then we'll see. What I think is um, something to watch for is what we, and I wrote a column about this the other day, uh, it's the idea of what we call the October surprise. Um, and I think it kind of cuts both ways. Uh, an incumbent president, uh, President Trump, uh, in this case has uh, you know a number of advantages and one is he can announce anything he wants to uh, my suspicion is that the October surprise this time around may have to do with the elusive coronavirus vaccine uh, there may be more than one um, it may be announced before November 3rd uh, it may be a vaccine that helps a lot of people or a few people but I think that would be a kind of a shock to the system that would um, uh, politically play to President Trump's advantage, uh, and there's nothing uh, in the world that, uh, that Joe Biden can do about that. There does appear to be some concern in the polling that the public now begins to believe that even the vaccine process has been rushed and perhaps even politicized. Won't that make a vaccine less effective only because people won't take the vaccine if they don't trust it? Well, um, I can quickly get out of my <laughs> realm of expertise when you talk about vaccines, of course. Uh, but the, um, yeah, you know, I think that there are many, uh, what I've observed from all the reading I try to do about this, there are a lot of variables. I mean, what will the particular vaccine do? Uh, what uh, will there be a number of vaccines uh, that do different things? Will each of them be uh, effective? Uh, and I think the the ongoing, you know, uh, furor over, uh, you know, e even uh, wearing masks and things that seem so sensible um, uh, is creating suspicion and doubts. And that's so, you know, we need to have a national mobilization, and I haven't seen that yet. Uh, on election night, we may see one set of polls, one set of numbers come in because it appears that the Trump voter is more likely to vote on election day or early, while the Biden voter may vote uh, by absentee and with the ballots coming in later. Are we going to get into a Bush-Gore situation with one side claiming victory based on what happened election night and those numbers start to change a little bit as we go on past election day? Uh, I think so. I think that's a very good question. And in fact, uh, more to the point, I think it's a, it's a good uh, way in which to uh, prepare our own expectations, whoever you're for. Um, I mean, we, we're very unlikely to see, unless there's a huge landslide that is toted up on the evening of November 3rd, uh, we're more likely, I think, to see, uh, you know, a, a period of maybe several weeks uh, where um, uh, particularly in light of uh, uh, doubts about the capability of the U.S. Postal Service and worries about that, I think we're likely to see a period of weeks, not one night, um, which used to be the norm. You know, you always you like to stay up late and see who won, but I don't think we're going to see that. And in fact, there may be more of a tilt um, in the um, that produces an election night outcome that favors President Trump. I mean, uh, as you suggest, Biden voters may be more uh, for fear of virus or whatever reason uh, to to vote, you know, um, uh, by mail, and, and it'll take a while for those to get in and to be counted. And so, I think we need to kind of hold our fire in terms of projecting winners. Lots of uh, this year of all. Uh, lots of concern about uh, um, um, in, in wrong information. Uh, that's not unusual in, in political races, but now coming uh, not from the parties, but also coming from foreign countries, from Russia, China, and maybe now even Iran. Uh, what, what, what advice could you give to people out there about when they see stuff on social media about what they do it? When you and I were reporters, we were often told by our editors, if your mother says she loves you, check it out. That's right. Yeah, always check it out. Um, um, you know, Pat, I may be getting a little off that question, but, I, you know, I keep 
continue to believe that what we need more of in our country is education about how news media work. Uh, you know, I mean, a good course in how to read the newspaper and how to understand broadcast news, uh, um, uh, you know, would be in order. Uh, because uh, back to your question, I, th I think the, you know, there, there's so many sources of information and not, and they're not all equal, uh, as you well know. And, 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 and the hard reporting that challenges statements and facts uh, is what is the most important. That's the way our system has always worked. Okay, let's take a break. Heel Hunt's our guest. He's a columnist and blogger with Tennessean. Back to continue our conversation after this break.